six chambers represented here today, and among us we represent ten different communities. Highland Park, Lincolnshire, Green Oaks, Libertyville, Mundelein, Vernon Hills, North Chicago, Waukegan, and then of course Lake Forest and Lake Bluff. Now what I would like to do is introduce our board president, um, Deborah Haddad of Haddad Law Firm, who will introduce our special guest. Thank you so much. Welcome. It is my sincere privilege to introduce you this, today to Brad Schneider, the United States Congressman for the 10th District of Illinois. For more than 20 years, Congressman Schneider has had a successful career in business and management consulting, advising companies both large and small. Brad has helped many family-owned businesses address the challenges of today's economy and plan for the future. Brad understands the impact thriving small businesses can have on a community's overall economy. In Congress, Brad is focused on strengthening the middle class, helping small businesses grow, protecting the environment, and getting Washington focused on securing opportunities for future generations. As a distinguished member of the House Committee on Foreign Affairs, Brad is committed to ensuring the United States leadership in global affairs. Brad has deep ties to the community, including service with the Jewish United Fund, the Chicago Council on Global Affairs, and business and professional people for the public interest. But among his most enjoyable commitments, he coached his son's soccer and baseball teams for 12 years. Brad earned a BS in industrial engineering and an MBA from Northwestern University. He currently resides in Deerfield with his wife, Julie, and their two sons, Adam and Daniel. As Joanna mentioned to you, Congressman Schneider has graciously agreed to take questions upon the conclusion of his presentation, and we would ask that you hold your questions until the end of his remarks. Congressman Snyder, we appreciate your joining us today and look forward to your remarks. Thank you. Can you hear me? All right, uh, Deborah, thank you. Thank you for the nice introduction. Uh, I, I will tell you uh, the applause for being a coach. That was probably one of the most rewarding, most fun things I ever did especially coaching soccer. I know coaching soccer, you start with the, the little kids and it's kind of a, everyone kind of rushes one way or the other. Um, and eventually as, as time goes on, you start getting into strategy and, and really having the, uh, the sophistication of the game. Uh, being in Congress, I sometimes feel like I'm back at that kindergarten soccer field. Um, <laughs> so that's the thing. But uh, I appreciate the introduction. I have a fairly long prepared remarks, but I'd really want to prefer to get to questions, so I'm gonna go off script a bit and uh, then we'll have time for questions. But let me do the thank yous. I, I do wanna thank the Lake Forest, Lake Bluff Chamber of Commerce for hosting this gathering. It's a, a, a impressive audience we have here tonight. I, I too wanna to recognize the, the individual chambers that are here, Highland Park, Lincolnshire, North Chicago, Waukegan, and GLMV chambers for the help organizing today and really for what you do. Um, 50 events, that's one a week with two weeks vacation. That's fairly impressive. Uh, 10 communities represented here, uh, co-hosting the lunch. There are a lot of reasons why I think the 10th district has much to be proud of. Uh, the economic base is a key uh, piece of that and what you all do is critical to that to keep our future strong and our, and our future bright. Uh, the fact that you all work together, the fact that you are advocating for the small businesses uh, in, in the 10th district, in the area, are, are critical. So thank you uh, again for being here. Uh, Joanna, where'd Joanna go? And Deborah, thank you for uh, what you're doing, uh, the hard work organizing this. Uh, the the uh, elected officials, the uh, leaders, the community leaders here, thank you for being a part of all, all that makes this, this a great district. Um, what I'd like to do, as I said, is, is touch a bit of what's happening in Congress, the things I'm working on, 
and, and get your answers or your questions so we can, we can touch on that. But if we talk about what's going on in the, in the 10th district, what I'm focused on representing the district, uh, I'm often asked what's the number one priority. And without a doubt, I give the same answer every time. It's the economy and, and job growth in, in, the, in the district, in the country. We need to have a vibrant economy that's creating high quality 21st century jobs, jobs that are at the top of the pay scale, jobs that are adding value, not just whether it's adding value to products, adding value in services, but adding value to our communities. And I think that's what all of you here um, represent. Uh, it was mentioned in my introduction that I'm on the Foreign Affairs Committee, and it's uh, especially at this time in, in history, it's an important place to be. It's an honor to be there. Uh, I'm also, and I requested to be put on the Small Business Committee. And the reason I'm on the Small Business Committee, I ask for this, is because too often small businesses don't have much of a voice in Congress. Large companies can afford large teams, not even just having one person in Washington to advocate for their issues, but oftentimes I, I saw about the merger of American Airlines and US Air that together they have 55 people working in Washington helping convey their interests. But small businesses don't have those resources. So it's important to have a voice in Washington who understands the challenges you all face, who understands on a day-to-day -day basis but also a long-term basis um, what these challenges are. And I think having spent my career working primarily with small businesses, also large, but for 16 years I worked with family businesses. I understand what you confront as you're trying to grow your business, what you confront as you try to bring on people and develop and train them, looking to expand into new markets or introduce new products. To be that voice in Congress, I think, is a special responsibility. But it's more than being the voice, because as people come and talk to me in, in, in Washington, in, in the district office here, it's to be able to understand and have the ear to know what it is that these small businesses are, are facing every, each and every day as they're trying to grow their businesses. One of the things I did to, to expand that outreach is uh, a program I call Brad at Your Business. When I am home, I am trying to visit as many businesses as I can. Every time I'm home, I, I visit at least one. We, at this point, have been well over 40 businesses, touring the companies, understanding what their uh, operations, how they work, understanding what their employees face, what the managers face. Uh, it is something that has been an incredibly important source of information for me to understand what drives the economy in the 10th district. But it's not just the businesses. We have two community colleges here that are on level with, on par with any of the community colleges around the country. Oakton and College of Lake County. The high schools in the 10th district, we have 18 high schools. 10 of them are in the top 100 high school, top 1,000 high schools on Newsweek's list, top 1,000 high schools in the country. Some of the programs you see at the, at the community colleges, at the high school, I'll just comment briefly on, on the uh, Wheeling High School Manufacturing Lab. The lab I saw at Wheeling High School when I walked in was on par with anything I got to work on in, in college as an engineering student. The fact that we can give these kids the opportunity to see and learn and develop the skills they need to go into the 21st century economy is critical. Right? That's why 80% of the businesses I visit say we have a hard time finding people with the skills we need to do the jobs we have. And that's why the first bill I introduced last winter was the America Works Act that works with these community colleges, these educa educational institutions and with industry to make sure that the students they produce have the skills companies need to fill the gaps and to allow them to grow. Okay? But many jobs aren't just the uh, jobs that have uh, educational skills you'll get in a classroom, but have the skills you need on, uh, in, uh, to learn on the job. And as the economy is slowly growing but not growing fast enough, this week I was pleased to introduce a bill called the LEARN Act that will allow companies to bring in people, give them on-the-job training, allow them to get the skills they need to grow, and work in partnership with the government to do so. That's why small business being a voice, being an ear for small business in, in Congress, I think puts me in a very distinct position. And that's why I invite all of you to reach out to me uh, doing that. Let me talk about Congress in general and, and what you do. We are talking at the table about um, uh, gridlock, the effect it has. I know from my experience, having owned and run businesses, having worked with clients uh, in their own businesses, your job as managers, as much as anything else besides managing people and marshalling resources, is managing risk. And you have risk of markets, risk of competitors, new product risk, technology risk, all kinds of risk that uh, businesses face on a day-to-day -day basis. 
But what's made the American economy the engine that it has been for the last century, I believe, is the fact that we have not had, historically, political risk. Uncertainty generated by gridlock in Washington, making it hard to make decisions here at home. That's why I think I was elected to go to Washington, try to work through the gridlock, and to bring some stability, predictability from the, the, what's, coming out, what's coming out of Washington. And we need to look no further than the shutdown, uh, still November, so the shutdown last month. The estimates are that that shutdown cost $24 billion to the U.S. economy. And we didn't come up with a, a solution to the shutdown. We moved the can a little bit forward to January. We cannot have another shutdown. Okay? It is reckless, it is irresponsible, and it creates the uncertainty that makes your jobs managing your businesses that much more difficult. The good thing that came out of that shutdown was that we have a budget conference. Okay? That sounds like something dramatic, but it really is the way it's supposed to work. The system's designed that the House passes a bill, the Senate passes a bill, and the two sides come together for a conference. That conference should have happened last spring. Okay? We now have 28 people, 21 from the Senate side, 7 from the House, sitting in a room, hopefully working out and coming up with a compromise that will allow us no grand bargain. We just need an answer for a budget that's going to get us to the end of 2014, fiscal 2014, next, next September 30th. So then we can start working on a budget, a reasonable, responsible, responsive budget to the needs you all have to grow your businesses looking to 2015 and beyond. But this is the, the regular order we need to see in business, and that's why the gridlock, I think, is so harmful to our economy. What I'm looking for is not just a way to address the gridlock, but to drive growth multipliers. Right? What can we do here at home with government, state, local, state, and federal, that will allow the economy to grow? I've often talked about one of the key things in this country. We need to invest in infrastructure. We need to invest in the roads, the electrical grids, the manufacturing infrastructure that will allow us to expand and compete on a global basis. The 10th district here, maybe you all know this, but we are the third highest concentration of manufacturing of any district in the country. Let me say that again. The district that includes Deerfield, where I live, Lake Forest, Waukegan, Grays Lake, a lot of suburban communities, is the third highest concentration of manufacturing of any district in the country. Right, people kind of raise their eyebrows when I say that. I say, but it's not smokestack. It's not Rust Belt manufacturing. It's 21st century advanced manufacturing. It's the manufacturing that's going to lead this economy forward. And we have it here because we have the educational institutions, the Big Ten universities, the community colleges, and high schools I've already talked about. But we need to continue to invest in that manufacturing to promote people going into manufacturing jobs as a good career, to give incentives to companies to invest in R&D, to invent products here, make those products here, and ship them around the world. That's how we continue to grow our, our economy. In addition to manufacturing, it's about people. I talked about America Works and the LEARN Act, but we need, need to continue to invest in people, in their education. We need an education system in this country that makes sure every kid, regardless of where they live, has the opportunity for an outstanding education. I say this so much, my staff roll their eyes when, when, when I start to repeat it again. But if China and India educate only 10% of their kids at honors levels, They'll have more honor students prepared for engineering, science, medical careers, the highest level of careers. They'll have more honor stu students than we have kids in this country to even educate at all. We need every kid, every hand on deck, and that's why we need to focus on quality education in this country. So let me wrap up my, my comments uh, just in general uh, with talking about some of the big issues we face. As I said, if we're going to grow our economy, we need to invest in our infrastructure. We need to continue to look forward. We need to believe that the best days of this country are ahead of us. We need to focus on big, broad issues. One is a comprehensive immigration reform bill. Every company I visited, large and small, says, Brad, we have to get immigration fixed. We have to address this. Around this district, around this country, people are looking for comprehensive immigration reform. The Senate is, ha has passed a bill. There's a bill in the House that mirrors that with some changes on the border security that I think brings it more in line with what is in the interest of the country. Right? We're looking for a passage, or at least a vote, on that immigration bill. I think if it came to the floor, we would address it. And we need to address health care. Right? Nobody is more frustrated or disappointed in the rollout of the health care um, 
plans than I am. It was a fumble and a stumble out of the gates on October 1st. It never should have happened. But I believe the goals of the Affordable Care Act, the need to provide quality affordable health care to a nation, to give stability and confidence going forward, is a worthy goal. We need to be working on fixing it. The things that are positive in the Affordable Care Act, we need to build upon. Helping kids stay on their parents' plan to age 26. Making sure their pre-existing conditions are no longer a preclusion from getting health insurance. But we need to also address that the, the, the bill as it was introduced, the law that was passed, and as we roll it out, it's far from perfect. And that together, Democrats and Republicans have to sit at the middle of the table, we were talking about it at lunch, sit down and figure out how to make this work. Because if we don't address our health care, where we're spending one and a half to two times more per person in this country than other developed nations for no better health care, we're not going to be able to stay competitive. No matter how much we invest in infrastructure, no, no, no matter how much we invest in R&D, no matter how we, much we invest in educating our students, we need to have a system that will provide us the full breadth to compete on a global scale. We're 5% of the world economy. We have the greatest universities in the world. We have the greatest engine of innovation. The 20th century was the American century because of those factors, because we invented things here, made them here and shipped them around the world. The rest of the world is going to catch up to us. We need to continue to invest in people, in technology, and in ideas. And if we do that, we will continue to maintain our lead, and we will continue to see the growth of small businesses that are 90% of the entities in the country, 65% of the new jobs created in the economy, 55% of all labor, our entire labor force, small companies will lead that way. Thanks so much. Thank you so much, Congressman Schneider.